Hi, this is Josh from Over the Shoulder Coding. And in this series, I'm gonna walk you through the advent of code challenge for 2018. And I'm gonna do my best to solve all 50 of these problems. You get two problems per day, and you have to unlock the second problem for each day by solving the first problem. So I'm gonna try and solve all 50 problems for all 25 days leading up to Christmas on December 25th. I've never done Advent of Code before, but a friend recommended it to me. So I'm gonna try it and walk through these challenges and show you how I approach them so you can learn from my mistakes. All right, so day one, we've detected some temporal anomalies, one of Santa's elves at the Temporal Anomaly Research and Detection Institute, Research and Detection Instrument Station tells you. She sounded pretty worried when she called you down here. At 500 year intervals into the past, someone has been changing Santa's history. The good news is that the changes won't propagate to our time stream for another 25 days. And we have a device, she attaches something to your wrist that will let you fix the changes with no such propagation delay. It's configured to send you 500 years further into the past every few days. That was the best we could do on such short notice. The bad news is that we are detecting roughly 50 anomalies throughout time. The device will indicate fixed anomalies with stars. The other bad news is that we only have one device and you're the best person for the job. Good luck. She taps a button on the device and you suddenly feel like you're falling. To save Christmas, you need to get all 50 stars by December 25th. Collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. After feeling like you've been falling for a few minutes, you look at the device's tiny screen. Error. Device must be calibrated before first use. Frequency drift detected. Cannot maintain destination lock. Below the message, the device shows a sequence of characters in frequency, your puzzle input. A value like plus six means the current frequency increases by six. A value like minus three means the current frequency decreases by three. For example, if the device displays frequency changes of plus one, minus two, plus three, plus one, then starting from a sequence of, then starting from a frequency of zero, the following changes would occur. Current frequency is zero with a change of plus one, and the result is one. The current, the current frequency is one, and the change is minus two, the resulting frequency is minus one. The current frequency is minus one, change of plus three, the resulting frequency is two. And then if the current frequency is two, the change of plus one, the resulting frequency is three. In this example, the resulting frequency is three. Here are other example situations. Plus one, plus one, plus one results in three. Plus one, plus one, minus two results in zero. Minus one, minus two, minus three results in minus six. So starting with the frequency of zero, what is the resulting frequency after all the changes in frequency have been applied? I'm gonna link my GitHub and y'all can follow along. So let's get our puzzle input. All right, so we have plus 13, plus four, minus eight, and it's really, really long. So we're not gonna do this by hand. I'm gonna copy this over to a Python project I've set up with PyCharm. So we have 999 lines of input of plus some number, minus some number. So we know we have a running sum. So we need to start from zero, add a number, subtract a number, subtract a number, based on what the plus or minus is. So I'm gonna read in this file I'm going to read in this file and in read mode. And I'm just going to make sure that I have it correct for now. All right, so I have some sort of file. Let me see if I can read the lines. Okay, I can get all the lines down here. So plus 13, plus four. Let's look at the first line. So yeah, plus 13, plus four. And I get each line as an element of array. 
and I can say for line in input file read lines print line and it converts the slash n to a new line so I want to strip it which will remove white space and now each one is on its own line and let me see what happens if I convert that to an integer maybe Python will handle it out of the box for me okay so Python handles the plus and minus for me so plus just becomes a regular integer and minus becomes a negative integer so this is now super easy all I have to do is have a sum starting at zero and for each line we're going to add the integer value of that line to our running sum. So int line strip. And when we're done with all lines, we will print the sum. And the sum is 574. Let's see if that is correct. Submit it, and we got the correct answer, 574. So that is the first half of the puzzle solved. Now the second half of the puzzle. You notice that the device repeats the same frequency change list over and over. To calibrate the device, you need to find the first frequency it reaches twice. For example, using the same list of changes above, the device would loop as follows. Current frequency zero, change of plus one, resulting frequency one. Current frequency of one, change minus two, resulting frequency minus one. Current frequency minus one, change of plus three, resulting frequency two. Current frequency two, change of plus one, resulting frequency three. At this point, the device continues from the start of the list. Current frequency three, change of plus one, resulting frequency four. Current frequency four, change of minus two, resulting frequency two, which has already been seen. In this example, the first frequency reached twice is two. Note that your device might need to repeat its list of frequency changes many times before a duplicate frequency is found, and that duplicate might be found while in the middle of processing the list. Here are other examples. Plus one, minus one. First reaches zero twice. Plus three, plus three, plus four, minus two, minus four reaches ten twice. So plus three, plus three, plus four would have already been ten. Then we do minus two to eight, minus four to get to four. Then we do plus three, plus three, and get to ten. What is the first frequency your device reaches twice? All right, so it's the same input. So we have the input file there. And so we know, let's say this is part one. save that and then make a part two where sum is zero again we're going to iterate through all lines But this time, instead of printing the sum at the end, what we're going to do is make a dictionary of all sums we've seen before. Really what we want is a set. So we can go make a Python set.
So we're going to make a Python set. Here's the documentation. You can look at the data structures. And we can test for if a number is already in the set. And if it is, we will just return that number first. And to add an element to the set, we're just going to use the add. All right, so pretty simple. We're going to start the set with our sum. And then we're going to do the same thing to change what our current sum is. And then if sum is in the numbers we've seen, return sum. So it didn't run, didn't finish in the for loop. All right. So well, we'll just wrap this whole thing in a while loop. While sum not in number seen. We will run this for loop over all lines. So now let's see what happens. All right, it's run for a while without any output. So instead of letting it run forever, So after each loop over all the lines, we will say we have been through n number of iterations and seen however many numbers seen. And since we know there's 999 lines, the second part here should be 999 multiplied by this. So let's try it again. And we have to Make sure that we increment number of iterations. So we go through lots of iterations without increasing the size of numbers seen.
All right, so we finally got something working. And the problem was that input file.readlines would not start back at the beginning of the file every time it was called. So let me walk you through what we've been doing so far. So we still have the sum from before. Number seen is the set of numbers we've seen. And I was using iterations to count how many numbers we had added. And iterations should equal the size of numbers seen as long as we had not seen a repeat. And the first time we see a repeat, if numbers is all if the sum is already in the number seen, we will print the first number seen is and then return the sum. So just like before, we're iterating through the line, each line in the file, except that we've extracted it first. And adding the previous sum, which we were starting at zero, to the numbers we'd seen, changing the sum to reflect a new frequency change. We printed it just to see what it was. 452 and then we check to see if it was already in the numbers we've seen and so for about 139,000 iterations we'd never seen a duplicate number and so then we incremented iterations by one and when in this for loop again. And every time we finished all the lines in the file, we would go out to the while loop, and while sum was not in the number seen, we'd start at the beginning of the file again. So that's how we solved this. It was a brute force solution. There is definitely a more elegant solution, but we're gonna check our answer first. 452. And we got the right answer. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you like this kind of live streaming, let me know. I'm gonna continue through the rest of Advent of Code. And don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you can see future videos. Thanks and I'll see you tomorrow.